Hey losers, welcome back. Thank you for gracing my channel with your holy presence once again. If you are new here, hello you. It's kind of gross. Before we begin this video, I'm going to pick the winner of the giveaway that I held last week. Um, my inbox is now flooded with your messages. I don't know why I asked you guys to DM me. I kind of regretted it, but um, I don't know. It was the most straightforward way I could think of. So um, yeah, let's pick the winner. Okay, I'm going to pick the first winner. These are all new cheapos eyeing for a free home projector. And boom. Congrats, Miss Tit... Tit... Titania? Congratulations, Miss Tit. Alright, here's the second winner. And boom. And the winner is Valerie. Oh, you included a little message here too. I would really like to win for my home-based business so that I can conduct my holiday programs for my dance kids, blah, blah, blah. Oh, wow. So please let me win. It will really, really help my home-based business to go blah, blah, blah. Well, you won it. Congratulations, Valerie. You are a new owner of a Lumos home projector. I'll be dropping you guys a DM on Instagram after I film this video. Anyway, back to our scheduled program. All right, what do you get when you take a bunch of rowdy boys, a chalet, and a police officer who loves to walk, and you put them all together? Wait, what do I smell? It's Crime Watch, baby. And you know, I thought my days of reviewing Crime Watch videos were long gone. I've put down my inspector cap for this review series. But then I came across this episode and it was just too good not to share. So without further ado, let's let's take a blast to the past to when chalet gatherings were cool and when it was cool for guys to have fringe covering half their faces. Hey, happy birthday, happy birthday. Thanks, thanks, thanks. It all started at a simple birthday party. Larry had booked a chalet to celebrate his 18th birthday with a small group of friends. Hey, thanks, 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 thanks. Oh, yeah, I introduced you to my friend. Okay. One of them was 14-year-old Lam, a student. Although Lam wasn't a member of a gang, he mixed around with friends who were. Oh, fuck me. Look at that mop hair. Doesn't that just bring back memories? Hey, bro. Bro, my fringe longer than yours, bro. So anyway, the episode begins with mop hair boy meeting Gerald and of course, what do you do during a chalet? You drink till you manage to puke out last year's Christmas dinner. Now, hey, Lam, who's that? Your girlfriend? Huh? Yeah, Judy. Hi. Hi, nice Hi. to meet you. Enjoy yourselves. Huh? Hey, you're too small boys. May I not drink too much? Huh? Yeah, well, well, uh, sure no. Yeah. More, more, more. Okay, cheers. Ah, the good old days when boys would compete with one another to see who could drink more. Hey bro, bota bo lampa. Cheers. And then two hours later, you see Jonathan puking by the bushes. Bro, bota bo lampa. So anyway, the kids start drinking and then a mop hair boy's girlfriend decides to go to the toilet in her drunken stupor. Toilet la. But she's so inebriated that she can't walk, so this happens. <laughs> hey yo, don't touch my girl! Hey, wait, touch my girl! Ooh, did you see how violent that push was? I mean that push is sure to get under any man's skin. That's a violation of the man code because you never, you never rub another man's nipples without his permission. Oh, no, 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 no. No, you never do that. Oh, Gerald must be so pissed right now. His nipples must be bruised. Now okay. Gerald may be pissed, but I hope you won't be because it's now time for a word from today's sponsor. Don't worry, it'll be quick. This is your work table and it sucks, but you know what doesn't suck? That's right, it's the Omni Desk, baby. Did you know that your work desk is the most overlooked part of your workspace? Why support the heavyweight of your failed ambitions with a shitty table when you can now procrastinate on Singapore's number one custom desk? Experience the perfect desk height. Whether you're sitting down watching your favorite YouTuber or standing because your back hurts from carrying your shitty teammates in Overwatch, the Omni Desk is the perfect table for working from home. And it comes with a variety of tabletop finishing, from micro textured wood to solid wood offerings like their brand new Ichi collection. OmniDesk also has an entire ecosystem of accessories curated specially to improve your OmniDesk experience. From monitor arms to anti-fatigue mats, the ecosystem is infinitely expandable. I mean just take a gander at my beautiful workspace. Don't need to feel jealous because now you too can have this workspace. All you need to do is go to theomnidesk.com. So if you are in need to upgrade your shitty ass workspace, check out the OmniDesk at theomnidesk.com. And thank you OmniDesk for sponsoring today's video. So following the violation of Gerald's nipple area, Mop Hair Boy decides to call his gang. Oh no. 
you die, I show you, I have a gang. But it wasn't really a gang, it was just one dude. Maybe they had a shortage of manpower, I don't know. <laughs> and then we cut to the next night, a full 24 hours later, where Mop Hair Boy arrives with his one-man gang, Pon Tuck. The next day, Pong Tuck arrived at the chalet and met up with Lam. You know what, touch my friends go, right? It was just an accident. Small boy for you shouldn't be touching girls. What time are you going home? We set up outside. They have a small altercation and then Mop Hair Boy, he um... He does this. Oh, and thought he could, as he built, thought he could, <laughs> as he built. <laughs> oh, terrifying. Oh, I mean, a mop hair boy is, he is surely an S tier gang member. Rubbing rival gang members' nipples. And then he does this gesture with such finesse. Oh, truly, truly a top tier gang member. You won't see anything like this in Singapore. Even Gerald's friends are laughing because they all know that Gerald is just not as good a gang member as a mop hair boy is. But anyway, Gerald then decides to call his gang leader, James. Someone here looking for trouble. I think he want to whack me. Hey, can you get the gang to come down and teach him a lesson or no? James was the gang's coordinator and spokesman. And apparently, James is he's the spokesperson of the gang. Like, wow, gangs these days have such good PR and marketing strategies, eh? Hi, good afternoon. I am the spokesperson of the Scorpion Gang. In the last quarter, we have become the number one gang in Singapore. We have increased our recruitment rate by over 40%. And recently, we have discovered a new technique to punish our rival gang organizations. It is called... The nipple push. Alright, so after Gerald made his phone call to James, it is revealed that Pontak has been sitting at Gerald's party the whole time. Not really sure why. Like, so he crashes Gerald's party and then he sits down to have a drink at his party. I mean, Pontak sure has some ginormous steel balls to be doing that. What happened there? Was he like, Are you Gerald? You molested my friend's girlfriend? You're gonna die! You're gonna pay! You're gonna. Is that ice lemon tea? <clears throat> Can I have some first? <clears throat> my, yeah, my throat's kind of dry, bro. You mind if I have some? <clears throat> but you're gonna die. You're gonna pay after I drink the iced lemon tea. <clears throat> Be right back. Ponza, let me talk to the Thai boy. Hey, Thai boy, my friend want to talk to you. Yes, what's your problem? Hey, you dare bully my friend, is it? Hey, no point talking on the phone. La. Want to talk, come on, talk, face to face. Sad. One hour time, outside Burger King. Sad, one hour. Take your phone back. Your friend talking for trouble. Whoa, did he just, did he just twist? Uh, what the fuck was that? Is that a new gesture for fuck off? Hey, fuck you. Fuck off. Also, I just love how Pontak talks. Like the tone, man, it's, it's all about the tone. He is the penultimate embodiment of a Singaporean gangster. Because that's exactly how the young ones talk. Hey, <laughs> come later we're going McDonald's. Eat some ice cream. Then later John and Apui coming. Then we'll go to Kakabo Thailand. So anyway, Gerald decides to call for more backup, which kind of snowballed to 13 people on his side. So what does Pontak and Mop Hair Boy do? Call for more backup of their own? No, they go in alone. Point him out so we can slap his face together. Hey, there he is. And obviously the talk didn't go well, so one of them suggested that they settle this at a car park, which is, I mean, no surprise there, to be honest. I mean, that's what gangs do, right? They apparently like to settle things in a car park. Like, I don't know, is there so many things to settle? They're always settling everything at the car park. What? Someone stare at you? Go car park settle. Huh? Someone bump into you and never say sorry? Car park settle. What? A Xiaomi may ask for your number? Bring her go car park settle. Hey you, let's go to the car park. You sure? Hey James, don't think you're the only one that can talk. I also can talk. Come on, let's go. Lam, you stay. Hey, are you sure, bro? Sure. If this gentleman molested your girlfriend, he should apologize. I will make sure he apologize. No need to fight. Whoa, whoa, wait, 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 wait. What? Pontak? What are you doing, bro? You, you wanna die? How are you gonna beat up 13 people? He's fucked. Fucked. Big time. So the boys head off to their adventure to the car park, leaving Mop Hair Boy and Gerald behind to have a, a intense nodding competition, you know? But as the boys were on their way to the car park, one of them threw a cheap shot and knocked Pontak on the head with a wrench. 
Ouch. And the rest is history. Pontak gets a good beating. There's blood everywhere. And he gets sent to the hospital. I mean, what what do you expect from such an uneven matchup? 1 versus 13? Yeah, he's, he's a goner. The boys then all get called in to the police station and they start snitching on one another. And that's the end of the episode. Yeah, that's how it ends. Of course, there was a whole wrap up by a public official, which is basically, you know, that's why you shouldn't join a gang, kids, because nothing good will come of it. Yeah, um, but with that said, I hope you guys have learned a valuable lesson in today's video, which is to go for regular haircuts, you know, you never want your fringe to be covering your face, unless you want to, unless you think you look good in it, which really, you don't. Anyway, thank you for watching today's video. If you enjoyed, consider subscribing. Hey, Kenna, later we're going McDonald's. Then we eat some ice cream. <laughs> then later, then later John and Apui coming. <laughs> then we're Then later John and Apui coming. Then we're going to Kakabo Thailand. Fuck. <laughs>